Hello, friends and comrades. It's me, a tremendously talented governor with absolutely no flaws or problems. Pay no attention to all the pop-ups on screen. They are completely unrelated to any bad decisions that anyone may have made at any point in time. And welcome back to Ostrif. Boy, that was an intro and a half, was this? Soil is exhausted. Are we not moving to Fallow next time? What does hemp need? Okay, can we somehow move it along? I guess not. Okay, we're gonna move to Fallow, and we're just gonna do that. It's fine. It's fine. We're fine. This is fine. Wait, how does that work? Oh yeah, it does work. Okay, it's fine. Cool, excellent. Uh, right, so last time we did a thing. We we established our farming situation, and we kind of began uh, what I hope is going to be uh, the escape from poverty. We added a lot of new fields, which hopefully are going to uh, pay off next season. This season we also have some nice fields. We've got some potatoes. We have some sunflowers for some reason, which isn't too great. But we've got a lot of wheat and we've got a lot of other stuff. We do have the problem of currently a lot of people leaving our town, which is not ideal. But we do have um, ways of, of obtaining food. Right now we are terribly in debt, so I'm hoping that these problems will be resolved today. I don't know. Maybe we'll just die. Maybe that's what's awaiting us. Anyway, while we are waiting for that to resolve, can we just maybe put put around some uh, some some benches? They they seem very cheap or free. Are they free? Hold on. Where do I see the price of something? How do I? Oh, okay, there. So, yeah, I think benches are just free. So. We could just decorate while while all while all hell breaks loose. We've already been decorating a little bit, and I do like the fact that people actually sit on the benches. I think that's really cool. Um, let's add some benches over here. You know, why should our workers just need to sort of run around all the time? They can take a rest. They can take a load off. Um, so I'm just gonna make those, and I also would like to add. What else can we add? I know that all of these are mostly decorations, but like, ooh, we could add this arch. Will this arch assist us to not starve? <laughs> um, you know, decoration is important, and since we've got nothing else to do right now, other than just hope that we don't starve or die, that's kind of all we're doing. That's, it's fine, it's fine. We've got our little hatchlings and uh, livestock limit, which is good because this means that uh, as soon as we get to 15 on both, we're gonna get both chicken meat and eggs. Uh, and as soon as we stop starving, I'm gonna increase these and we can also multiply them over here and then we're gonna have two things. But currently we are, um... oh boy. Wait, we have 58 open vacancies? Ho oh, ho, that is not ideal. Um, but we're gonna we're gonna get people moving in, and then the vacancies will be filled as soon as all the work is complete. Oh, I guess these are all like adding to the vacancies. I guess because it's it's farming season. A new family is setting in. Okay, this is good. I would like our people not to starve. That is um, a preference of mine: is seeing people not starve. So that, that's lovely. That is lovely. Also, I like that we are fishing. It means we've got fish. We're not producing any dried fish because I'm guessing it like, if, if that's, you know, a, an extra step, maybe we need more workers or like it slows down the production of fish. And right now we really are worried about, um, about lack of food rather than anything else. Let's take a look at what these people are offering. Some cows. <gasps> They're also offering bulls and oxen. Okay, this is of interest to me because um, if we get some bulls, potentially that means we can multiply our own cows, right? So maybe we should buy some. We'll buy two bulls and two cows. Let's try it. <laughs> let's, let's try it. All right, thank you. I know that we are going further in debt. That's fine. We just need to make sure that there's someone who is over here that's uh, that's 
Let's push it. It's working over here, cause you know it's um. It's a problem when we don't have any workers and nobody can unload the stuff that we have. Can we somehow somehow make this uh, have higher priority for workers or something? I guess not. Uh, but yeah, we definitely. We definitely have a people problem. Why is this brown? Oh, I guess it's um, I guess it's from the leaves. I was like, why are the houses brown? But we do have some decorative trees, and it is fall, so I'm guessing that's why it's brown. Uh, also, I don't know are, if we're doing everything right because they still say they don't have enough food variety, even though they have fish and potatoes. That's two foods. Hopefully, that's enough. You know what I mean? Maybe it'll be better next year, because we'll get some buckwheat. I just want to make sure that we have different things coming. This is all wheat. That's not ideal. And next season, this is going to be... Yeah, next season is going to be like, no potatoes. Why are we doing this to ourselves? You know what I mean? Why are we not just doing something else? This is the most food we can get, by the way, is potato, buckwheat, potato. That's according to that little guide. But I do want it to be a little bit diverse, you know? I want them... Ooh, wait, are the cows inside? Can we reassign this pasture? Nope, says it's season. It says it is season. I want to assign the cows back to this pasture just because I don't understand what's going on. Make this bull an ox. No, no, no. We want to protect the bull. And hopefully they will they will make babies. Look, we've got them now. We received them. And hopefully that's going to result in some babies. Now, I was told that we're not going to need the church. But it is kind of bothering me that we have this church and we're not doing anything with it. So, perhaps we will do something with it. Where can we... Okay, maybe we should undo some of these builder positions because we're not building anything at the moment. Um, and let me just check something. Do we have any stone on hand? Just, like, lying around? Doesn't look like it. I mean, if this is alphabetical, we no don't even know what stone is. That's how terrible we are at this. Okay, that's good. Um, we are still in the negatives, which is not ideal, but we're going to get out of it. Is there something that we can build that will help us produce more food? That's the question. We can make textiles and things. That's all fair and well. But what I would like... Oh, wait, this just produces hay from nearby grass. Do we have that? Oh, we have some of that. Okay, cool. That's good. Let's, uh, can we add another one? Sure. Um, you know what I would like? Oh, look, that was instantly completed. Why? What's the difference between a hay barrack and one of those things? I guess that just stores hay. I guess we should store hay nearby as well. Oh, that's already a hay store. I guess I've had this thought in the past. <laughs> this is fine. Um, yeah, so is there... I guess slaughterhouse. Wait, do we need for for chickens? Do we also need a slaughterhouse? Also, there is windmill, but I don't know if there's a bakery. Do people just buy flour or do we need to to transform it into bread somehow? The those these are the questions. Like do people buy wheat or do they buy flour? Are we selling flour? We are selling flour. I guess we're just not making enough flour. Maybe we need another windmill. I mean, we don't have enough workers to produce more stuff. But, you know what? I guess it never hurts to have two windmills. Can I... This building can't be rotated. Well, why is it facing a different direction then? Uh, okay. We're gonna make another windmill here. We're just going to have two windmills. And hopefully that's going to do something. And I also want to check out... Okay, a messenger has arrived. Can we just buy some meats or some food? Dried fish. What if we bought this dried fish? It's really cheap. So we'll buy this dried fish. And, I mean, I guess we could also buy some potatoes. Potato, potato, put, put... Jesus Christ. 
Potatoes are really cheap as well. Um, so maybe if we buy these, uh, it'll it'll also help our, our food so shortage. Let, let's check. We do have a ton of potato. Why are we buying more? Yeah, I guess just one more thing will help. But yeah, do we need... No, we don't need. Look, we, we are making chickens. Chicken meat out of chickens. That's good. We've got our hatchling and livestock limits. Um, and you know what? We're just going to increase that to 20. Because that's going to speed up the production of things, right? Uh, are we selling eggs in the market? That's, that's a question as well. We are selling eggs in the market. Okay. So the other question that I have is storage. Do we need to store some other stuff in here? Potatoes? Um, I mean, I guess fish? Dried fish? Milk, we do have cows. Milk is good to store. Uh, and... Beef? Beef? Uh, I, yeah, I really, I don't know things sometimes. Like, is it, do we need to store it? Do we need to do something with it? How do we, what do we, etc, etc. Is sometimes, you know, problem. Look at Sviatoslav. Oh, I like this. This this is a very handsome old man. He's 70. Look at it. He's looking good for 70, don't you think? That's looking very great. His son? Yeah, his son's got it going on as well. Um, interesting, interesting choices here, though. Also, Hafia? That's an interesting name. Is that a Slavic name? Or is it just like... Like, it feels more, um, uh, like, Semitic in nature. So, like, Arabic or, uh, Jewish, possibly. But, yeah, I feel like more, more... I guess, unless it's Sophia or Hafia as in, as in Sophia Maria. In that case, I guess it could be, but I don't, I don't recognize this name as a Slavic name. Let me know if, if your name is Hafia <laughs> and you're Slavic. Um, cause yeah, I like these names though. I think it's one thing is just that it's so unusual to see Slavic names in, um, in video games, right? Cause usually they go with, they just, people just go with generic names. And if it's a medieval city builder, then they'll usually go with some kind of, uh, French or English names like Henry and stuff and maybe at best you'll get like Germanic as well like Hildegard and things like that but you never get Slavic names like I remember how weird it was when in Heroes 5 or yeah I think it was already in Heroes 5 but also in Heroes 6 they had some of the names be Slavic I think it's Heroes 6 where you've got like um Pavel but they all pronounce it like Pavel and also there's a woman whose name I think was meant to be Svetlana, but her name is Sveltana. It really frustrates me. I don't know why they did that. Anyway, look at our town. We made a windmill. Do we have... I'm sure we don't have a worker. Look at all these open vacancies. Uh, I don't know why this is happening. Like why we need so many laborers. I guess that's just like something that always happens. It's just like all those open um, positions. But we could try and hire a worker here. Because it looks like this is a very slow thing. This batch progress. Uh, and uh, yeah, I think that uh, we probably could use a few more. Not enough food variety. You have potatoes and flour. Surely you can do something with that. I guess it does make sense that you don't make bread. Because I think making bread was... At least in the Slavic world, I think it was always more of a domestic activity. Over here we have this concept of like you had the white kitchen and you had the black kitchen. And in one of the kitchens you made like all the gross things that had like fat coating the walls and it was gross. And then I think the white kitchen was the one that you used for bread. And um, that was like, you know, it was a lot cleaner and that's why it was called the white kitchen. Whereas the black kitchen, you would like make meats and you would do all sorts of things. Um, and especially melting things for, uh, 
melting things for like fat and stuff, I think that produces just so much dirt. And especially if your building is made out of, uh, if it's made out of like wood and um, if it's not really worked, like, you know, people back in the day didn't have massive varnish coatings for all their wood. I think that it would very much have like this black uh, texture to it and also just a terrible, terrible smell. And I think that's where the name comes from. Yay! South Slavic kitchens. I actually don't know if this is a South Slavic thing or if it's more of like a local thing. Because we've got this very interesting intersection of two cultures over here where you've got like, um, oh, a messenger, where you've got a, an intersection of um, just Alpine autochthonous culture, like Germanic culture, Slavic culture, and like we've got hints of Italian and also hints of Hungarian culture all mixed together into this one unique thing. And I really like that. But I know that a lot of local people are like, no, we're our own unique people. And it's like, everybody's formed with, you know, who they surround themselves with. Like, uh, you know, it's it's not uncommon, for example, to hear, to see people who have uh, names that are straight up German, like last names that are just like, they're not, you know, they're not what the names are in this game, like Timoshenko or, or, Omalyaninko. Omal I thought it said Omalyinko, but it's Omalyaninko. Uh, or Pelek, or Zikar, or whatever these are, right? We have names more like Grafenauer, or uh, what else is like, I don't know, just names that are Germanic in origin. Like, we also have Slavic names, but like we have Novak, Kovac. And all the standard ones um, but yeah Novak by the way is a very popular last name and it is someone who deals with trees it's like the person who cuts down trees in a forest um, and yeah and that's why that's why it's very common here we have a lot of trees um, but yeah you also have you know Grafenauer or our president for a while his na last name was Turk with a umlaut which we don't have in our alphabet um, but yeah, so that tells you, you know, and this guy wasn't German or Austrian, he was local, but uh, that just tells you how intertwined all our cultures are. Like, you can have names in your last name, uh, letters in your last name that don't even belong to, to the alphabet of the language that you're speaking, of your first language. You know, some people, that's the only language they know, and they have letters in their last name that don't come from that language. And I think that that's really cool. Like, I, I know that some people are like, Oh no, we can't have that. We must have ethnic unity. And it's like, no, you know what? I think it's nice if we have this, these elements that make us who we are. I think it reminds us that no nation built itself. You know, like everything that builds us is a summation of all the wonderful things that, uh, that we have learned from each other as people. You know, like I speak, my regional way of speaking is, has so many words that are Germanic in origin, that are straight up German. And I wouldn't describe myself as someone who isn't Slavic. I'm Slavic, but I live next to Austria and my people have lived here for hundreds of years. And of course we picked up various things. And yes, you can say like, oh, but that's the language of the oppressor. We lived under German speaking rulers for a thousand years. It's like, yeah, that's fair enough. But I also feel like um, it has enriched our culture. Like I've said it before and I'll say it all the time. One of my favorite TV shows is The Great British Bake Off. And it wasn't because I was so mad about baking or because I love, you know, I don't know, reality TV competitions, which is basically what the Great British Bake Off is. Um, but it's, oh look, they automatically switched. <gasps> oh, can we link this now? Yes, we did it. Okay, can we link this one? Oh, this one's just broken, I think. Maybe we need to just rebuild. Can't remove during season. I think this one is broken, actually. Yeah. Um, okay, so this one, I want to make... Um, 
Oh boy, I need that little helper thingy. Hold on, I'm just gonna quickly go and find it. Let's just alt tab. Just don't crash, game. Don't crash. Game, it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. <laughs> um, let's alt tab without the game exploding. Okay. Uh, yeah, so what was I saying? Yeah, so the Great British Bake Off is so great because you've got this mishmash of, um, you know, different people's cuisines and and everything the the like the uh, everything that is brought together in order to create what is called like British cuisine because we we all joke about like how the Brits have no actual food culture like they've got fish and chips and they have trash but it's really what it is is they have so many different things that they can produce and make and it's all a summary of the different people that live there you know like when season six i think was the one where nadia hussein won the whole thing and she was um she had this wonderful like she she was mixing british cuisine with like mostly like it was mostly still british cuisine but it was also twists on all sorts of things and you have all sorts of chefs there like you had the lithuanian girl i think who was uh, on one of the seasons, and you have, like, Chetna, who was from India, or, like, she wasn't, she probably wasn't from India, she was of Indian descent, I'm sure, uh, or Pakistani, and she was constantly, you know, like, making stuff, not just with Indian or Pakistani cuisine, but she was also using, like, she was making a potitsa, she was uh making things inspired by central european things and it's just that's what i love about the great british bake-off it shows that taking influences from different cultures just makes the whole the sum of their parts better like with cuisine is such a good example of of this mixing of, of things of how our cultures can actually, you know, we can work together and we don't have to think about like, this is ours and blah, blah, blah. <laughs> like, it's, it's all about how we work together and how we improve things and we learn from each other, you know? Like the cravat, <laughs> the cravat was given to, to English dress based from Croatia and we get words from each other and we get concepts from each other and dresses and styles of clothing and everything you know we are so uh we benefit so much from from trading with each other from from interacting with each other i just think it's such a shame that some people would focus on this idea of purity because like you're not pure nobody's pure you know, nobody is pure. What are you going to do? You're going to say that your culture isn't affected by any other culture? Like, you built your country and nobody helped and you never did any trade or any learning or anything. You know, like, it's just, I just really like um, these, these reminders that we are all just intertwined and, and... You know, that isn't to say that we should lose our local identities. I think that, like I said before, I think what makes this place really interesting and really cool, where I'm from, is this mix that we've got, is the heritage. But our heritage is not like, we are pure and we have never mixed with anyone before and we should get rid of all the foreigners because now they're ruining stuff. Like, we have cohabited and worked together with dozens of different peoples that surround us some of whom are extinct now and we still have elements of their cultures in our culture and we we built our towns on the ruins of roman towns and we work together with with other slavic people of different religions of different backgrounds and it just it, it's just it just makes us better i think it doesn't make us weaker to admit that we are not unique or that like i mean we are unique but that we are, that we are not an island unto ourselves i guess oh boy this got philosophical but i mean what am i going to comment on we're just trying to get out of this terrible debt um and we are so far failing 
Um, but I think, I think it's getting better. We do need some housing, so we got some more workers. So let's try to work on that. But I don't know where we're going to have people live now. You know, we've kind of uh, filled in this space. Maybe we should just get rid of some of these trees. Um, maybe we'll do like a, a few buildings back here. I'll just turn them. No, not like that. Give me the other one. That one, yeah. The slow one. But yeah, I just feel like... Um, I don't know. I guess this is vaguely topical now. Um, I, th I think it's just a, a, a good idea to remember that we always... We've always cohabited. Since 10,000 years ago, when first civilizations began to... 500 years ago, like, we have always lived together with other people, and a lot of the time, yeah, it wasn't peaceful, but, um, the point of growing up as civilizations and as the human race is that we understand that we can cohabit, and just because one people have a different set of beliefs or a different skin tone, um, that we don't need to fight each other. <laughs> or, like, that we don't all need to have our own little corner. You know, I, I do think that it's important, for example, if I go to Germany, um, that I'm not just like, well, this is my culture, and I'm just gonna bring it to Germany, and y'all just have to deal with it. Like, I, I feel like that would be very strange, right? I'm imposing something of myself. But, like, if I come to Germany, and I've seen this from people, you know, from people all over the world, like British people living in Germany and Middle Eastern people living in Germany, you bring some of yourself to a place and you share it with others and you also learn what the people there do. So it's like, um, it's, it's like in the UK, like I said with the Great British Bake Off. All of the cuisine there, I would describe as, like, British. It's done by British people. It's done by people, uh, it's, it's done by British cooking techniques. It's done with using British sensibilities. But sometimes it uses advice and uh, tools and ingredients from other cultures. And that's the thing, you know, like, I've seen people who, who live in Germany who are basically when you get into their own house, it's like a little island. It's a little island of the UK, just living inside of Germany. In this little small town, German town, you have a little piece of English, uh, like it, it's a little English haven, and they they live in German ways, and they work in Germany, and they learn, they speak German, but they also have their own thing. I think that's. You know, I don't think that would make Germany weaker or worse. And if we're okay with it for that, for British people, then why are we not okay with it for others? I don't know. Seems... Seems weird to me. Anyway, this has gone on long enough. Nobody's listening to this anyway. And um, I'm pretty sure this is going to be one of those videos where I get a dislike. Uh, but yeah, I hope that you enjoyed this video. Look at that windmill go at full speed. It's gonna fly off. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed this video and my further descent into the negatives. And hopefully in the future we are going to finally fix our economy and bring new people to our beautiful town. Alright, I think that's gonna be it. So, um, if you did enjoy this video, feel free to do all the things that you do when you've enjoyed the video. And you can also check out my Twitch if you want to check out streaming. I'm actually gonna stream some of this. Um, I'm still gonna upload it to YouTube, but, um, I figured, you know, we could maybe have some conversations on stream. So if you're interested in that, it's in the description. And you could also check out some of the stuff that will be popping up on screen. Alright, I think that's everything. Have a lovely rest of your life. Goodbye.